We are going to continue and we do that now taking a closer look at the supplier ecosystem and we do that together with an expert Frank Levesque. Uh, Frank Levesque is the partner business unit leader mobility group at Frost and & Sullivan and as you know Frost & Sullivan is our partner in the organization of this first smart mobility conference. So good morning and uh, you know ladies and gentlemen I think you should see my full screen now, right? Yes, we see that. Um, it, there is just a small uh, bar that we are seeing. I don't know if you can click on hide. Do you see that or not? Oops. Yes. Yes. All right. Good. Perfect. Thank you very much, Frank. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I'll try to go a little bit faster on the presentation I'm supposed to give you now, um, having uh, sort of a, um, had some difficulties to get in. Um, so good morning again, everyone. Great to have you here. Um, great topic. Um, I think it's the first time that we have such a, such a, an event on the focus of, of corporate mobility and, and want to give you some, 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 uh, some perspectives, uh, based on the analysis, all the work that we do at Frost and Sullivan, uh, tracking innovation across mobility and in, in particular corporate mobility. So looking at the trends, looking at the, um, the, um, uh, offers the competitive environment uh, and sort of a, go a little bit further maybe from what uh, Sven and Eve were presenting earlier. So the thing is, when whenever we talk about uh, corporate mobility, uh, we straight away think about uh, company cars, fleet vehicles, leasing, a market that at Frost & Sullivan, we've been actually tracking for, for many years across about 40 countries around the globe. Uh, the message here, although it's a really, you know, a filled slide, uh, it's rather straightforward. In Europe, at least, um, you know, the passenger vehicle fleet market represents uh, 43% uh, of all vehicles are registered in 2019 and growing to 47% by 2023. Uh, that growth is even, um, that and, and that share is even more important in Western Europe than Eastern Europe. But really the direction is, is rather clear uh, and uh, the fleet market growing faster than the um, retail market. Hence the interest that um, we are getting as well in this specific segment. But Corporate mobility is not just about company car. It is about much more than company car. Connectivity, uh, digital technologies have opened up uh, the development of a, a plethora of new mobility uh, business models, uh, which initially, uh, for many of them, were deployed towards the general public, right? Um, that have been in time, over the past few years in particular, ad adapted, tailored, customized to support um, uh, an interest from uh, corporates uh, to integrate um, and to leverage these new solutions uh, for the benefit of their organization, of their employees, of their uh, business travels. And, you know, providing the development of a, of a um, sort of a landscape for offering um, new solutions, dedicated solutions that are effectively and efficiently um, integrated from an IT perspective. Whether you look at car sharing, whether you look at carpooling, parking, e-ailing, you know, all these solutions um, have been generally developed for the general public, right? But, um, you know, we've seen specific uh, offers, uh, specific solutions uh, being added to the portfolio of the main players, and even seen uh, a number of players uh, being completely dedicated to the corporate uh, space. I think 
um, we see six key drivers underpinning the shift um, towards shared and integrated mobility. The convenience that it provides, uh, that the, the focus on, on, on mobility as a whole, as opposed to looking at a single solution. Uh, the fact that we have regulations and policies that are setting the scene for a greater acceptance of that mobility topic. Uh, the push uh, from a regulation, but also from a CSR, so corporate um, uh, social responsibility, uh, towards sustainability and decarbonization, increasingly important uh, within the decision making. The possible efficiency and saving gains uh, that company can achieve from shifting the focus from a pure TCO approach to a total cost of mobility. But also the greater expectation for flexibility from both employees as well as corporates. And of course, the uh, development of a supplier ecosystem that is extremely dynamic, both in terms of new players coming from the tech, as was mentioned before, but also, you know, traditional companies that are trying to, um, you know, jump on the bandwagon, integrate these new solutions that their customers are asking for. First, Convenience. What, what, what does that mean, convenience? Convenience is, you know, on one hand, that capacity to reduce time wasted in traffic jams. Um, we know and we've seen that may, many times. I've, I've personally mentioned it many times that, you know, traffic jam is costing economies between 1% and 2% of their GDPs. Uh, that's a fact. So that capacity to, to, to reduce that wasted time is significant. Um, reduce stress associated to mobility for consumers, for, for employees, for corporates, especially around the parking uh, topics as well. Or reduce the underutilized asset, which is increasingly perceived as unacceptable uh, within our society. But also convenience means, you know, the integration of multiple solutions, multiple modes of transportation within an integrated platform, allowing employees to choose the solution that fits their needs best uh, to travel from A to B, to commute. And a fully digital platform that allows everything from planning to expense management. We talked about um, uh, about um, the um, uh, regulations. Regulations um, is not is you know just beyond uh, reg regulations for emissions um, restrictions bans that are being applied. Um, it is also uh, s s shown or seen that we have specific regulations towards corporate mobility. Uh, was mentioned earlier, um, you know, in Belgium, for example, the push to integrate mobility budget as an alternative to uh, only providing a company car. Um, the necessity, however, not to just um, en enforce that option, but also to have the taxation that supports it in the background to have the maximum effect. Um, in Germany, the uh, support towards working from home. Or in France, the development of a sustainable uh, or sustainability allowance uh, are some of the examples uh, where regulation is supporting um, the development of innovative um, mobility solutions or an innovative mobility landscape. I think sustainability and, and decarbonization, as I mentioned earlier, are becoming um, increasingly critical topics and parameters for corporates in their decision making to uh, deploy mobility solutions within the organization and for business travels but also for commuting. Uh, driving sustainability uh, for corporates um, and for our society in um, mobility will actually require transformation in general commuting patterns. What we are seeing from a very interesting study from uh, Mobility Ways in 2020, they found that within their sample, that 42% of commuters could actually walk or cycle to work, but only 15% do. 
92% could carpool, but only 10% do. 46% could use public transport within their sample, but only 18% do. This is what is the impact. The impact is amounting to about 10 billion kilograms of CO2 uh, that could have been saved, but was not been. Yet, it's not all, all dark, by all means. I think we're making significant effort across the industry and just highlighted a few on the, on the right-hand side of this slide from LiftShare, from Jojob, from Zipcar that are showing the impact that their solution is having from a decarbonization perspective uh, is significant. And it is important to share these examples, I think. But also uh, the fact that you know the, the 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 fleet market is at the forefront of driving electrification. In 2020, we are we are showing at the, at the total market nine percent of uh, nine and a half percent of sales was electric. A little bit lower on the on the on the fleet market uh, for this first uh, the, this this specific year, but it is expected to accelerate, and we expect by 2025 to see um, um, leasing of electric vehicle actually um, being um, above the market average. We talked about the shift from total cost of ownership to total cost of mobility uh, i think this is you know beyond that 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 cost is also an organizational change that that is required um, the the integration allows for a, a more strategic approach uh, to employee mobility uh, a more effective management of of costs um, integrating all mobility solutions that employees are using for business travel and commuting. Um, more effective policies um, the, to, to being deployed, uh, whilst delivering a better service for employees, which also, and that's important, reflect into uh, the image that corporates are portraying uh, to the outside. Fleet professionals um, from all our discussions and experts are uh, seeing that you know shifting from TCO to TCM um, is actually allowing cost optimization of up to 25%, which can be uh, saved or reinvested in providing the flexibility that we were talking about earlier as well. Frank. Um, um, Frank, uh, you still have four to five minutes max. Yes, I'll, okay. I'll be fine. <laughs> so the, I think one of the topic I wanted to bring to the attention is um, what I call the elephant in the room. Um, the elephant in the room in, in the name of, 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 you know, the impact of COVID on working from home. Our research is showing that, you know, clearly we are not going to go back to pre-COVID. Um, working from home is going to remain a significant part of the way we work going forward. And this uh, will have significant implication, a significant implication in where people will live, um, the impact on commuting, impact on type of vehicles that they will want to have, uh, and as well as new services that will need to be deployed by corporates to support their staff working from home in terms of IT, in terms of security, but also in terms of longer distance, maybe commuting uh, more in a more irregular manner. In this slide, we are showing um, different types of solutions being implemented by um, um, uh, corporate uh, mobility solution providers and what corporates actually um, have implemented in their, uh, in, their, in their environment and what they want to uh, invest in into the future in the vertical axis. In, in the top right corner, you see company cars. What's interesting in my mind is what we have more on the left-hand side is those on top, like uh, corporate car sharing or car, uh, cash car allowance, but also the impact that COVID has had um, in driving micromobility's interest, in driving the necessity to support uh, working from home, but also on the reverse effect, reduction in focus towards providing incentives to use public transport or corporate company vans. The, um, to support that, there's a, an exciting ecosystem that is being deployed. Um, uh, 
from um, you know offers and solutions uh, deployed by traditional players, uh, but also a plethora of newcomers um, uh, surfing the digital wave to provide um, new and improved solutions specifically for corporates. That picture is not necessarily um, complete by all means. Uh, in fact, there are many, many more players and some of the players are available and, and operating across many of these segments. Uh, but we are seeing you know, an expansion of many of these players across these segments, augmenting their footprint through M&A, through partnership, or integrating um, um, other players to provide uh, that platform approach to their, to, to, to their customers. And as a final slide, what is the future of corporate mobility in our mind? Well, it, it, will, it will need to be a lot more flexible and certainly customized. That customizability uh, in an intuitive manner needs to be, to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to be deployed. I think mobility audits, mobility budget, mobility managers uh, will become more common uh, going forward. We'll see mobility will need to um, integrate seamlessly both at the front end and at the back end uh, to support uh, corporates uh, with a, a mobility platform that uh, makes it easier for them will cater for new requirements associated to working from home. And as a final point, I would say that, you know, mobility is the new employee benefit. But employee benefits are going beyond mobility. Over back to you, Stephen, and happy to take any questions if we still have a, car, a couple of minutes. No problem, Frank. Um... I don't think that we have many more minutes. Um, if you can close perhaps your presentation or stop sharing, then I can put on mine again. Uh, but thank you very much. Thank you for the insights. And it's indeed great uh, that we can see that the ecosystem is evolving and what kind of trends, of course, are impacting the corporate mobility supply chain. Um, I'm sure that also throughout the day, um, the experts of Frost and Sullivan can answer your questions. And also, Franck Levesque will uh, be with us throughout the day. We will see him later on in our executive panel. So if you have a question for Franck, then you can uh, submit it via the chat. And then we can take that later on, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have also received some messages from the audience that some information on the slides of Frank that, that was quite dense and not always easy to read. We will look with the presenters if we can share the uh, slides with the participants, yes. <laughs> but the good news, the good news is that all sessions are recorded and that from next week on, they will be on our channel and we will of course inform you about that so that you can relive all the sessions and see all the presentations again, okay? So, Franck Levesque, thank you very much. Thank you for the insights and we will talk to each other later in this conference. Thank you. So, gentlemen uh, and ladies in the room, because we are uh, we have more than seven hundred participants. Um, we it's now time for the networking break. But before that, we do the networking. Please re remember that there are some poll questions. You can easily find them if you go uh, to the event button and you can find that button on the right of your screen so you see there that there is an event button and if you go in there and you click on polls there is already uh, there are already poll questions that are lined up and uh, in the next session that we will have i will highlight some of those results and discuss them with our uh, experts uh, as mentioned, it's now time for the networking break. Um, so go to the networking tool where you can meet at random, or you can also visit the booths of our sponsors in the village. We will be back at 10 o'clock. Thank you very much.